tight ends generally do well against Arizona. Kittle himself specifically does well against Arizona, but still, in a land in which there are so many tight ends doing absolutely nothing, it's nice to see some consistency from George Kittle, friend of the podcast. Plus, you're going to go with the, <laughs> the one eyes. <laughs> the one eye on the blind. The one eye man is king. I was going to do so the land of. I was no, waiting for it. I get terrified every time you say land. You had to see it out. I know, but then, <laughs> I, then I faked you out and I made you say it. <laughs> we both uh, are waiting for it. You made say it. it. I and I made you say it. it. That's that's Because I'm over here playing chess, not checkers. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Connor Rogers, Matthew Berry, Jay Croucher. It is Waiver Wires Day, but some big news dropped before we even got into anything. So, Jay, I don't know what you're doing this afternoon. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing this afternoon, but I'll tell you what Connor Rogers is doing this afternoon. Answering this question to every single media outlet out there. What the hell, Jets? What the hell? So we get news before the, just before we go on the show, Robert Sala, head coach of the Jets, has been fired. So we ask our Jets insider, does pre and post game on SNY for the Jets, has his own Jets uh, podcast as well. What? It, it is a bit of a shock, right? I mean, because we were talking about as bad as the Jets have looked, they could have won their last two games by the last miss of each game, a missed field goal, yep. a missed shot to Garrett Wilson. But... This, to me, the Jets had and an the, energy problem. And they're playing for first place first on place? Monday night. Uh, it's, I mean, the Which division has more been about great. the AFC East, but Sure, still, but my but point is, is, like, you're still in this thing. 100%. The Jets play Monday Night Football against the Bills. The winner of that game will be in first place in the AFC East. The Jets had an energy problem with Robert Sala that was kind of picked up on by everybody within the organization at the top of the organization, which I think includes Aaron Rodgers. Yep. That okay. could be up for debate. But the Jets had an energy problem with Sala where why are you coming out flat with 10 days rest against the Broncos? Why are you getting blown out in the first half against the Vikings? And they scratched their way back into that game thanks to the defense. And the, also just the demeanor of the coach on the sideline, the undisciplined nature. Robert Sala, this is not about this year. He's 20 and 36 as a head coach right now. And this was a win now year and the Jets are not winning enough. Now what happens next? Listen, does this fix the Nathaniel Hackett problem in the room? That's not gonna happen because Aaron Rodgers is there. That's a whole nother conversation. Sure. But for Robert Sala, the excuse making in press conferences got tiring. All the excuses were off the table. They have the quarterback this year. And let's be real, as good as the defense has looked at times, they've also had some really flat performances stopping the run, notably week one against the 49ers, notably at the end of the game against the Broncos. And at some point, somebody was gonna take the fall. Now, Woody Johnson does not fire coaches in season. So that's why this is a surprise. But the Jets have pushed all their chips into the table for this season. and. They could not anymore go on with Robert Sala's demeanor and the lack of preparedness this team showed. So what do you think changes from here? Do you think anything changes or is it just going to be um, more of the, or the defense has been solid even though it hasn't been perfect right. and the and offense has really struggled um, and Sala largely on the side of the defense. Do you think that this is that this is just kind of window dressing for the Hackett problem or what happens from here? Well, number one, they're hoping that the team gets a shot in the arm, right? And we'll see if Jeff Ulbrich ends up being the interim coach. Jeff Ulbrich calls the defense. So nothing changes on who calls the offense, who calls the defense. I just think they needed somebody to infuse some life into a team right now that it, has shown no life. Is that the idea? It's just like, hey guys, this is when now you guys aren't take, I like, this is the shot across the bow for lack of a better way accountability. to describe it. Account accountability. It is, I, I will say, you know, not that I'm the I'm the greatest Robert Sala defender, but I will say that uh, they never had a quarterback. Like, right. I, like I, for for them to sit there and go, look at how poorly the team performed over the last couple. Of, like, I would argue getting seven wins out of that team last year with you know with Tim Boyle and Trevor Zach Simeon. Wilson and Trevor Simeon under center is actually a hell of a mark. And so I get the slow start this year. Rodgers has not been great. No. He was great against New England, but he was bad against Minnesota. Missed Connor. a lot of throws. Right. And, and But the problem is, and we've talked about this, Aaron Rodgers is more powerful than Robert Sala in this organization. Clearly. So that's what this comes down to. Now, I can't sit here and tell you there was actual friction between the two, but I would be surprised if the Jets made this move without a sign-off from their quarterback, yeah. personally. It seemed that Sala was in trouble after the – two score lead thing on the sideline in the Thursday night game against the Pats. That was very much a kind of very kind of powerful oh. visual indicator. Here it is uh, right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little weird. Yeah. yeah. It reminded me of um, 
LeBron James kind of like palming off Eric Spolstra yeah. back in the first year of the Heatles. Worked out yeah. better for Eric Spolstra that than That look Salas. is, I'm getting you fired in two weeks. Look at that. He wants to hug him. Come here. <laughs> nope. Hands off. The stare of death. That hug is only for Nathaniel Hackett. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Um, do you... I'm, I'm going to throw out a wild rumor that I have... That I've, no, there's no <laughs> that you just made no, up? No, theory. It's not even a rumor, I should say. Rumor makes it sound like I heard it from somebody. I'm just... You know, sure. I, I'm in a group chat where this came up. Um, uh, do you, and not a, a connected group chat. Uh, do you think? Do you think? Do you think uh, Rogers was like, "Go get me Devonte Adams," and Woody Johnson's like, "Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, you bet. Let's let's kick the tires on that." And Sala was like, "Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Nathaniel Hackett. Like, how many Rogers buddies do we need here? It's not working." It has. It, we have Mike Williams. We 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 have right. we have Garrett. Well, we have enough Just weapons on offense. Just be better. The press conference wars between them have been interesting. And when I say wars, it's you really have to look deep into it. The cadence thing from a week ago <laughs> yeah. where, you know, Salah felt like maybe we should scale back on it. Roger yeah. said, how about we hold people accountable? That was our first giveaway <laughs> of like, okay, they are on different tracks here right now. Yeah. And I think also I think another thing that really probably pissed off Rogers is when Rogers took his trip to Egypt, right, and missed the two mm. practices of mandatory minicamp. Sala came out on that press conference and was like, he will be fined. They knew about that trip for a long time. And the way Sala presented that initially to the media did not make it seem like they knew about that trip. Right. And I think maybe there was some that differences between them since then, honestly. Yeah, that irked and him. You're, like, he's a guy that gets irked easily. Right, and, and doesn't let it go. No. So maybe this has been building going back to spring, quite honestly. I just hate to work with Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> it just feels like it would Unless be you're terrible. Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like you. I mean, Salah was in an impossible situation in a way. The team has not performed up to expectation. Last year, to your point, Matthew, like after Rodgers went down in the early part of the season, like their win total went to five and a half and they went seven and ten. Like I don't think they really underperformed at all last season with what they had. But yeah, it just seems like this was a building kind of uh, powder keg and it just exploded. And these past two games have been ugly. It's clear Woody Johnson's basically said Rogers is your team, and like I, I, I would agree with you. I can't imagine this move gets made without his approval no. and perhaps encouragement. Uh, last question for you here, Connor. And then we're going to get to fantasy football because uh, this is more of a NFL conversation than a fantasy one. But you know, I posted just for fun I, on Twitter. I just posted a picture of Belichick, like you know, just no context. This yeah. picture of Belichick, but you've seen a lot of it, right? Belichick, Vrabel, Pete Carroll's out there. Is there a chance that they try to get a, a big name coach here mid season or is that an off season conversation? Do they go with the interim coach? Like what, what do you think there now? Again, Belichick and Woody Johnson do not get along, but on the other yeah, hand, Belichick hates the jets, hates the jet, but on, but Belichick also likes winning, likes getting a chance at a Super really Bowl, wanted to coach this year and wants, didn't really get a job. To, right. Exactly. And so, I mean, the jets give him a chance at, you know, uh, winning a Super Bowl again without Tom Brady. Yeah, I think it's Ulbrich should be the interim coach here. It sounds like it's trending that way. And I think that I don't know if the Jets, because of Rodgers in the building, having all the power, have the pull for one of those big names, big name guys. I mean, you look at Vrabel, he's the most interesting because he has a chance to have like a second, you know, coaching career. Sure. Where he probably will be a little bit more selective on his situation after how things ended at Tennessee, where Pete and Belichick they're going to go somewhere for the short term and just hope they can win it. I don't think any of those moves will happen, right. but it would be some storyline if that was the route they went. Be amazing. All I know is Dan Quinn is off the table. <laughs> Future coach of the Pete year, Carroll, Dan former Quinn. coach of the Jets. Huh? Pete Carroll, former oh, coach know. of the Jets, way back in the day. I imagine know. that storyline. I think that's more interesting than Belichick. Hey, could you imagine? I don't think oh. it's happening, but. Just, I, I just got a name out there. I just. Rich Kotite. I'm just saying. Something to it's think my about. Halloween costume something last to think year. About. Yeah, something I'll to think wear the about. costume again if I that think, happens. I think it's just going to be Ulbrich. Like, you can't. Yeah, yeah. I don't no, think no, you can. Yeah. Right. There's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> just, there's a little bit of stability Just now. press every it's button possible. Let's try Vrabel. Vrabel didn't work hard. Chaos Let's Blender. Let's Belichick. Yeah. yeah. Eric Mangini, Turner. where are you at? Yeah. Eric Mangini, Mangini Revival. where are you at? Oh, my God. Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan, bring Rex back. Everyone, who doesn't love Rex? Every Jets fan loves Rex. Come on. Rex is the best. The Chaos Blender. Oh, boy. Wow, All right. what a start to today. Didn't, I didn't see this one. Tough day Connor Rogers. Oh, and the Mets fine. are playing a playoff yeah, the Mets game. Are on. The great. Are, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 uh, yeah, let's go to the waiver. Waiver wired. That's why you're here, probably. Notable <laughs> running backs on a bye. How we kick things off. Kyron Williams, that's a big one. Aaron Jones, who did not play in the second half with the hip injury, so he will get much needed rest. 
Kareem Hunt coming off the big week, Devon A. Chan with the concussion. Also, as a buy, Raheem Mostert's been hurt a lot of this year. He also gets a much needed buy. So it feels like Matthew, it's kind of the right time for three yeah. out of the five of these guys. A lot, yeah, a lot of big names that are on buy this week. Robert Sala, not on that list, but also. Uh, he's got a couple not, bye weeks. Yeah, ahead of he's, him. Not, he's not active this week, unfortunately. Um, all right. Uh, so, look, I, I think first off, I wanted to mention, again, Devon A. Chan and Aaron Jones, you just mentioned, they're not going to play this week. But if you have those guys and you don't necessarily, it may be tough in a bye week uh, to, to just use a roster spot on somebody that isn't going to play this week. But Ty Chandler's out there in, uh, in a bunch of leagues, right? He's had seven career games with 12 or more touches. He's averaging almost 12 fantasy points per game. He looked good uh, filling in for Jones at the end of it. And how about Jalen Wright? 13 touches, 86 yards in week five. Again, A-Chan in the concussion protocol. Raheem Mostert is somebody who has struggled with injuries throughout his career. He came back in this game, but two guys that I think probably should be rostered in more leagues, again, especially if you have Jones and or A-Chan. Can I just say with the Dolphins, it was quite, like no one paid attention to Dolphins, Pats 15-10 because yeah. it's one of the worst games that you can imagine. But they, they won that game and now they're one game out of the division lead. I think that's quite a huge thing in fantasy because all indications are Tua is going to come back. Right. That is meeting right. the indication. So guys like, well, obviously Tyreek, but like Jalen Waddle, A-Chan, like I think they're going to be season-long relevant. Whereas if they lost that game, then all of a sudden you're one loss away from the Colts next week. So maybe he doesn't come back or whatever. Now I think the expectation is this, this Dolphins offense is going to get back. And I think... I I think that's a great point because, by the way, if I'm sitting there in a league and I'm I'm four and one, or I'm three yeah. and two, I feel good about my. Try get Jalen model. Exactly. I think you could. There's there there's likely a team in your league that has one of those Dolphins players that's desperate, that's one and four, that's two and three, that needs to work, and all of a sudden, hey, you've got a couple of guys on by, and you're like, you know, like, hey, I'll give you something for, you know, I'll give you a, a usable guy, I'll give you Kareem Hunt for Jalen Waddle. I need to use Kareem Hunt this week. Well, I mean, he's on a bye. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to think like sure. a mid-tier, um, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a mid-tier running back, right? Like a – J.K. Dobbins? Yeah. He's a little bit too good. But I'm just like, I'll give you um, – think of a good, a good example here. Give me a – give me Tyler Algier. I'll give me like a usable – you know what I mean? Like, not great, but like somebody who's usable. I'll give you like Bucky Irving or Rashad White. I'll give you one right. of those guys for – like Jalen Waddle, like they, because again with the idea that like Waddle's not going to be great for the next two weeks, but we think Tua comes back, and then suddenly you've gotten um, uh, a nice player at below market value. All right, a quick mention here of guys that do not meet our threshold, but check your league just in case. Rico Dowdle, forty-four percent. Trey Sermon, forty-eight percent. Our I'm threshold in. here is uh, players need to be available in more than fifty percent of Yahoo leagues for us to consider them for the waiver wire show, but. To your point, Rico Dattle and Trey Sermon in that order are not 100% rostered. So if those guys are still available in your league, we would prefer them over any of the people we're just about to mention, especially Dattle who had 22 touches last week, back-to-back -back, uh, games with over 13 fantasy points. It just looks like Ezekiel Elliott is done uh, for the Cowboys. You know, that was an impressive performance by Dattle on Sunday night on the road at Pittsburgh in a game they needed uh, to win. And look, Jonathan Taylor, as long as he's out, Trey Sermon got 67% of the running back touches, touches against the Jaguars. It is going to be the Trey Sermon show as long as JT is not playing. Our top running back on waivers, Tank Bigsby of the Jaguars. He's got the Bears in London. 77% available, Jay. And a noteworthy thing to mention here, Doug Peterson, Travis Etienne, got popped in the shoulder again. He'll be okay. This backfield is the pendulum starting to swing towards Tank, who looks really good. Yeah, and he's just looked significantly better than Travis Etienne all season, really. And I think that he obviously shouldn't be available in any league at this point because of the opportunity. It's not quite a Cam Akers, Kyron Williams thing from last year, but there are elements of that where it wouldn't be shocking at all if Tank Bigsby becomes the guy. Now, Peterson has reaffirmed that Etienne is still the starter, he's still the guy, but it doesn't take much. Like, there are jobs on the line in Jacksonville. I don't think there's going to be some uh, kind of irrational allegiance to Travis Etienne for the sake of it. If Tank Bigsby continues to outperform, I suspect that he's going to become the guy in that backfield. Yeah, it, it, it's clear. And by the way, the Bears, for as good as their defense has been this year, they're bottom 10 in terms of most fantasy points allowed to running backs. And Tank Bigsby, just to the eye test, looks better than ETN. Uh, you know, Doug Peterson's like, uh, okay, well, if a team that's playing for first place in the AFC East can get rid of their head coach, what what happens <laughs> when one to four? I mean, one to four when, you know, again, my owner, Shad Khan, comes out and says, the time for winning is now, and they make a bunch of splashy free agent moves. Brian Thomas is coming on. So 
Doug Peterson knows he needs to win to, to keep his job. He's on the hot seat. So one of the ways you win is putting your best players in a position to win. Like whatever he says to the press, Tank Bigsby, Tank Bigsby's been the better running back. Yeah, we could have two coaches in a row and not come back from London. Uh, if the if the Jags lose to the Bears, seriously, um, yeah, we'll have them at the, Crys the Crystal Palace training ground. Back to back. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, that's the other thing is that yeah. So he actually might come back from London while they stay. Yeah, yeah. Plot twist. Tough saying for the Jags. Brutal. Uh, Brutal. Yeah, definitely a plot twist. It is worth noting, whatever, that there is no running back that has a uh, better avoided tackle rate or yards after contact per attempt this season than Tank Bigsby. Hmm. It's the second year that a tank is making noise in fantasy football. Yeah. He's because pushed, last year Tank Dell. I know, and Tank Dell has now fallen down the tank power rankings. I yes. would argue. He's now the number two tank. tank. He's now the number two tank. Yeah, tank two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Number three, of course, Tank McNamara. Okay. okay. That was four. Interesting. Can you keep four? Yeah. No, yeah, number four? I, I don't know another tank. Tank McNamara is an old time cartoon. Men named Tank Google search. First time I've ever searched that one. I don't know any of these people. Tank Abbott, <laughs> Tank Carter, T Tank Black. Nah, nothing. Not happening? Nah. I don't All know right. any of then those we'll, people either. And neither do I. Then we'll move on to someone mm -hmm. we do know and we're very excited appears on waiver wire today. Tyrone Tracy. Matthew, welcome to the party. That's right. Mm. That's our guy. That is our you guy. And I in yep. the preseason. You every have dynasty draft. Yes. He's every, on every dynasty roster I've ever had. Same. It's, same. it's a great feeling now. 77% available. We'll get in on the party if you can. This is the Giants' best running back, and he showed that against the Seahawks as Devin Singletary was out. 18 carries, 129 yards. Two tar. I think they need to get him going in the pass game even more because that's where he's best. But he just looked great in this Giants offense as they had a huge upset, Matthew. Most rushing yards in a game by a Giants running back since Saquon Barkley in week 10 of 2022. Once again, Brian Dayball also coaching for his job. And this is, I get it that he's loyal to Devin Singletary. They play, they, you know, they work together in Buffalo, but Tyrone Tracy gave them a burst on the road at Seattle, a desperate Seahawks team and came through. So I don't know how Tyrone Tracy goes goes back in the bottle, as it were, right? I, no. I don't know that he's taken this job over once uh, Devin Singletary gets over the groin injury, but there's no question he has earned a much bigger role on a team that is devoid of offensive talent. Especially, again, in a game in which they didn't have Malik neighbors either. Uh, but uh, Tyrone Tracy, a big game here. We've always said, uh, you and I, this is one of the reasons we liked him preseason. We said, I don't know if it happens initially, but second half of the year, Tyrone Tracy will eventually get going. Um, meanwhile, by the way, I drafted him in the League of Assholes, and I had just, I've had so many injuries, you know, Rasheed Rice and whatever, I had to let him go and then try to get him back. And Connor Rogers outbid me, uh, I think, yeah. by like $1. Well, so we're going to get into the state yeah. of affairs and the standings yeah. in that league, which I are absolutely it's, glorious. It's, it's uh, uh, I'm sure we are. Yeah. Mm. League um, of Assholes. Just on Tyrone and Tracy, tangentially related to that, uh, undercovered, not really addressed that much in the uh, constantly mentioned mainstream media. Daniel Jones has been good for a month now. He's been perfectly competent. fine. A adequate, competent. competent. Yes. He's been, well, in EPA, if you take out week one against the arguably the best defense in the league in the Vikings, and I get that that's 20% of the season, so we probably shouldn't take it out. Yeah. But if we do, he is sixth in EPA. Like, he's been very solid. And he, Wait, the fact Aaron that... Rodgers? As long as we're talking uh, about New York scrolling, quarterbacks. Scrolling, scrolling. He's 20th since uh, week two. So, yeah, Daniel Jones has been... He has been better than Aaron Rodgers. I would since say. week two. Yeah, since week two. Rodgers was okay against the Niners in week one. Um, but no, Daniel Jones. And look, fantasy-wise, all that means, I think, in terms of what's actionable, is that this can be a competent, serviceable offense, whereas it was looking like after week one that maybe it wouldn't be at all. But For it's been sure. Solid. Uh, it absolutely can be, and we'll talk about Daniel Jones coming up in a little bit here. But yeah, uh, we're big fans of Tyrone Tracy here at the happy hour. Roshan Johnson, our next running back here, 80% available. We mentioned the Bears have the London game against the Jags and then a bye after that. Jay, only 10 carries, but two touchdowns for Roshan last week. Yeah, and again, there's just a lot of uncertainty in this backfield um, when you consider what DeAndre Swift, how up and down he has been. Now, Roshan, he played 23 out of 74 snaps. That's not incredible, um, but at the same time, uh, there is opportunity here. DeAndre Swift played 49 of the 74 snaps. I think this Bears offense just in general is trending up. Caleb Williams, that was the best game by far that he has played. So he gets more control yep. of this offense. Um, I think people are just like the Bears a bit now. Like, what are they really doing? Like, they're two and a half point favorites over Trevor Lawrence on a neutral field. Like, that's an impressive, um, I guess, indicator of where they're trending. So, Roshan, he's a guy who should be rostered everywhere. And there's a chance that this Bears team could just get progressively better as the season goes on. And Roshan could be uh, the lead running back on a 
on a playoff team. He's averaging over 11 points per game in the last three weeks. He's averaging about 10 touches a game. And the past two games, like, he's gotten three goal-to-go carries. Like, we thought after last week, oh, DeAndre Swift is clearly taking over this backfield. But what this means is, like, they've just completely moved on, it feels like, from Khalil Herbert. And it's a two-running-back backfield. DeAndre Swift is obviously the lead. But to your point, Jay, Roshan Johnson's going to get enough work in a deeper league to be flex viable. And obviously if anything were to happen to DeAndre Swift, he becomes even more interesting, but uh, you know, 10 touches a game on, a, on a improving offense to your point, And he's getting some short yardage work makes Roshan Johnson pretty interesting. He's also just like kind of prime example case. One of guys who could take over where the number one incumbent guy doesn't have enough pedigree to hold on to the job sure. based on pedigree alone. I think ETN falls into that zone now, like Rashad White, Bucky Irving, uh, the Denver situation in general. Yep, yep. These are the situations where you really want to target the backup. Matthew, how do you handle the Texans' backfield right now? As we're waiting for Joe Mixon to come back, obviously Cam Akers is on this roster and involved. Arian Gumbagale, 99% available. Yeah. I mean, but he gets a lot of work when when Mixon doesn't play. So. He had 21 touches in week five. He played 67% of the snaps. Uh, over the past two weeks, he's averaging over 15 fantasy points per game. Having said that about Agunbawale, he's their passing down back, right? Akers is more of the lead guy. And so they're on the road at New England this week. Not a game that you expect the Patriots to blow out the Texans and they're in trailing mode. So I do, I will have Akers ranked higher than Agunbawale this week, assuming Mixon is out once again. In the three games since Joe Mixon has been injured, He's averaging 11.3 touches per game. He's averaging 9.3 fantasy points per game. He got into the end zone last week as well. It is a bit of a committee, but I, I rank, again, it sort of depends on what you need, like long-term, if you're in a deeper PPR league. There's certainly a chance that Ogun Wall is available in almost every league, whereas Akers is not. Uh, but I think, especially for this week, I prefer Akers to Ogun Bawali just because against New England, I think they're going to be able to... Uh, you know, it's not. It's, gonna be a, it's certainly going to be a close game, or if not, they'll be leading. I don't think they'll be trailing where they need to use uh, Ogunbowale in the passing game as much as they have been the last two weeks. Yeah, also, like, big concerns around Joe Mixon sure. and the lack yeah. of clarity there. Uh, he is on slap them like a grape, uh, and I'm worried about that. I would be more worried if my team wasn't a mix of the 27 Yankees and the 85 Bears. But Joe Mixon, the fact that he tried to practice and then set yeah. back and also just the wording from D'Amico Ryan's still trying to figure that out so he sprained his ankle like a That's month ago good. like how are we trying to still figure this out so uh, concerns there uh, and Akers and Ogumba Wale are uh, interesting flies in that offense in the same game Jay Patriots Antonio Gibson he's available in 62 percent of leagues he's coming off a week where I thought there'd be more carries six rushes 52 yards you'd like to see him involved in the passing game even more but he's out there in over half the leagues yeah he is and look he played 28 snaps from Andre Stevenson played 28 snaps of the 60 total for the Pats offense. This seems just like a true committee at the moment. Stevenson still with more upside, but Gibson, there is still the opportunity for him to take more of a role there. More of a deeper league ad, but just we thought Stevenson was on a, and I think he still is on a very short leash because of all the fumbling issues. Yes. It seemed like the press around the uh, the you know the beat reporters around the Patriots indicating going into last week that they thought Gibson would overtake Ramondre Stevenson. Steven, maybe that was just them floating a balloon to try to, you know, light a fire under Stevenson. It seemed to have worked. Having said that, though, uh, very quietly, Antonio Gibson, again, this is deep league, but at least 55 yards from scrimmage in three of the past four, he actually leads this Patriots backfield in yards per carry and yards per target. So given the short leash on Stevenson, Gibson is, again, interesting-ish in, uh, in deeper leagues where you're sort of desperate. When you're in a league like the League of Assholes and every single player with a pulse is gone, uh, you got to dig deep. You got to dig deep. To recap, Matthews running back waiver targets for week number six. Tank Bigsby, Tyrone Tracy, Roshan Johnson, the Texans duo of Cam Akers and Daria Gumbu Ali. Antonio Gibson, Justice Hill. We did mention Jalen Wright and Ty Chandler as well. Let's move over to the wide receivers for waiver wired. And just like we started with the running backs, the wide receivers that are notable on bye weeks, including tight ends as well. But Cooper Cup and Justin Jefferson Tyreek Hill, Jordan Addison, Xavier Worthy, Jalen Waddell, and Travis Kelsey. This is a, I mean, this is a murderer's row of bye weeks for wide receivers, especially if you also have Nico Collins who could miss this week. Just a lot of wide receivers will not be available. Uh, so let's start with our, our number one guy, Darnell Mooney of the Falcons, coming off a monster and week. And we don't break. expect Devontae Adams to play either this week as well. I mean, no. it's, he's right. No. So. Definitely not for the Raiders. No, exactly. That's but maybe saying. not at all. Yeah. Well, I, even if traded. Even if traded, it feels like. That feels fast. That feels fast. We'll see. Yeah. So anyway, a lot of big names uh, not going to play 
this week. So how about Darnell Mooney? Like, and I feel like we've talked about Darnell Mooney like three or four weeks in a row. But, yeah. but for the love of God, America, will you listen to us on Darnell Mooney? Like we've been talking about this, like I feel like since week one of the season. Um, but still available in over 52% of Yahoo leagues. 24% target share, at least a 24% target share in three of the past four games. He's averaging 18.1 fantasy points per game, and they like to chuck it to him deep. 55% of his targets over the last two games have been on deep passes. It's a nice matchup against the Carolina Panthers this weekend, who are bottom 10 in most fantasy points allowed to opposing wide receivers. Feels like they're finally getting their rhythm down on offense. I don't expect Kirk Cousins to throw it 50 times for 500 yards every week. But he's throwing it a decent amount, and when he throws, when he's not throwing to Drake London, he's often throwing to Darnell Mooney. And if he doesn't throw to Darnell Mooney, Ray Ray McLeod yes. now has back-to-back -back games with 11 or more fantasy points and an 18% target share last week in that crazy uh, passing game against the Buccaneers. But deeper leagues, Ray Ray McLeod is kind of interesting as long as we're talking about the Falcons. Yep, Darnell Mooney has outscored Bijan Robinson this season, as everyone predicted preseason. Uh, and I think that there has been just an adjustment in this Falcons offense where now hey, this is the Kirk Cousins show. Everyone yeah. thought it would be the Bijan Robinson show. Everyone bought tickets to that show, wanted to see that show. That show doesn't exist at the moment. It's Kirk. He's flinging it. Him and Jordan Love both doing their Brett Favre impression at the moment. Like, Kirk's just putting it up for grabs. Kirk could have had seven touchdowns and five picks on Thursday night against the Bucs, uh, which is good news for Darnell Mooney. Josh Downs also on our list here, Jay, 60% available. He's been awesome since he's been back from injury and looks like the number one receiver in this offense. He does. Now, I think that if you have Josh Downs on your team, you want to have the Joe Flacco show yeah, continue. Yeah, you're for Joe Flacco. Look, this is the reality. Joe Flacco uh, is just a better passer than Anthony Richardson right now, and I don't think that is particularly close. Obviously, Richardson brings other things to the table. All indications are that it's Richardson's job still going forward. Shane Sarkin said that. Richardson expected to play this week at the moment. Uh, but Josh Downs, I think he is, to your point earlier, Connor, uh, last week, that he is probably the most talented receiver on the team. Um, but we need to see Anthony Richardson be able to complete more than half of his passes. Yeah, for sure. I, like Since he's returned from injury in week three, he's got a 29% target share, basically. 19 fantasy points per game over the past two weeks. He's the slot guy, right? And so that's yep. always an advantage there. So we like the talent. And this is somebody who emerged. We've talked about him a few times on the show as well. And I think just people, because he was injured in the preseason, because they drafted A.D. Mitchell, you know, maybe just they were sleeping on Josh Downs, but like all this kid has done when he gets a chance is produce and uh, he's available somehow still in 60% of Yahoo leagues. He won't be anymore. Go get him. I agree with you. You feel better about him with Flacco than Richardson, but targets are earned and he's earning a massive target share uh, since he's come back in week three. A pass catcher with more availability, Jalen Tolbert of the Cowboys, 92% available. He's got a decent matchup against the Lions this week. Matthew, in week five against the Steelers, 10 targets, caught seven of them for 87 yards. Of course, the big touchdown as well. At least 13 fantasy points very quietly in three of his past four games. Uh, and I don't think, will teams be able to effectively take CeeDee Lamb out of the game the way the Steelers were? Maybe not, but 24% target share, 89% route participation in week five for Jalen Tolbert with Brandon Cook's eye on IR, so we know he's gonna miss at least the next three games, Jalen Tolbert has, uh, you know, become a a viable number three wide receiver in fantasy on a team that's going to throw more often than not. The mainstream media was hiding that for quite yes. some time as well. Good call, Denny. Yeah, Denny Carter uh, brought this up on Friday show last week. Uh, good for you, Denny. Nice call. Nicely done. Yep. All right, as we show the receiving leaders here um, in week five against the Steelers for the Cowboys. And by the way, look at that. I mean, like six for 70 for Ferguson, CeeDee Lamb, five for 62. Not great, but nine targets for CeeDee Lamb, seven targets for Ferguson, and yet Tolbert, in a game that was fairly low scoring and slow pace, he was the guy. Tolbert still was able to generate quite a big fantasy day. So I think that's that speaks well of his ability to do so in the future. Here's some deep league wide receiver waiver targets for week six. Michael Wilson against the Packers, he's got 87% availability. Keon Coleman against the Jets on Monday Night Football, 55% available. Jalen Polk hopefully getting some more work for the Patriots as we're on Patriots quarterback watch as well. Yeah. Trey Tucker, another guy from our Friday segment with Denny that we've talked about. He's got the Steelers, still 82% available. And Juju Smith-Schuster, he's got the bye week. 
But Juju Smith-Schuster with the monster performance on Monday Night Football. Yeah, pot another potential comeback player of the year, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jay. Like a bit what of Flacco say, Jay? about him. Yeah, him uh, or Flacco. Let's, let's say it. Let's say it another week with Juju. But he, I mean, he's Patrick Mahomes' is number one wide receiver, <laughs> potentially. See what Xavier Worthy does, obviously. But Juju's the probably... Is he the favorite to lead the Chiefs in wide receiver targets the rest of the way? I'd say so. I, over yeah. Targets, yes. Yeah. Tar targets, yes. We'll talk about production. But three straight, uh, just on some of those guys real quickly, Michael Wilson, three straight games with at least a 20% target share for Michael Wilson. Jalen Polk, you mentioned that quarterback change. If they go to Drake May, I think it's interesting. There's clearly a connection between May and Polk. He's now had two straight games with at least six targets, Jalen Polk. And Trey Tucker, the two games that Devontae Adams has missed, 93% route participation. Again, this is somebody Denny brought up a couple of weeks ago. So uh, very interesting. We don't expect Devontae Adams to play another snap for the Raiders. So uh, we like Trey Tucker in uh, deeper leagues. If you need a quarterback, we're here to help as well. We'll do a quick mention here on Kirk Cousins because he's 49% available and he's got the Panthers this week. Trevor Lawrence, 46% available in the London game against the Bears. Derek Carr, there's a lot to unpack with that one. He's 67% available. We'll keep an eye on his status but as well. But he's at Tampa Bay. If, again, if, if he's healthy and he's available, like it's you like that matchup. matchup against Tampa Bay, you don't love the Lawrence against the Bears in Chicago. But again, in he London. has looked better. London, I'm sorry, yeah. It's in London. Sorry, not in Chicago. Against Chicago in London. Uh, but certainly, if Cousins is available in your league, him playing at Carolina is better than any of the quarterbacks we're about ready to mention. Uh, so we'll see. If you can choose between them as well, I would take Cousins over Lawrence the rest of the season. I would agree. 100%. Daniel Jones tops our list yes. of guys that meet our threshold. Yeah, he's the one good New York quarterback. 91%. <laughs> let's slow down. Every time we get excited about Daniel Jones, he lets I'd us down I'd still take well. Josh Allen over Daniel Jones. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yes. New York Nicely done. New York quarterback. That's yeah. fair. Uh, Nicely fair done. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, open the, don't open the can of worms yeah. of Buffalo, New York. <laughs> New Jersey. Yeah, it's Josh Allen is the actually the only New York quarterback. Correct. Also true. By the letter of the law. Also very true. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, either way, uh, it was just a dumb joke, but uh, <laughs> thank you for the uh, the correction. That's all right. Um, we have fact the, check on this yeah, mainstream media show. I was told there'd be no fact checking. <laughs> yeah. I was yes, told there was yes. no fact checking. And there is Big Show yeah. sitting there fact checking. Yeah. So uh, Daniel Jones is available in 91% of the leagues. He's got the Bengals that, listen, Daniel Jones is no Lamar Jackson, but we've seen what happens with this Bengals defense. Very quietly, at least 18 fantasy points in three of the last four yeah. games. It's worth, uh, he plays the Bengals, as you mentioned, on Sunday Night Football. There you go. Malik Neighbors? Uh, maybe maybe returning? Malik Neighbors gets back as well. What a throw. Hopefully, you know, he's running a little bit. 11 rushes for 38 yards um, in week five against the Seahawks. That was one of the concerns about Jones, who has been a top 12 fantasy quarterback before, but we're coming off the coming off the major injury would he run as much as he has in the past and it seems like he is willing to do that as well only three teams in the NFL have allowed more fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks than the Cincinnati Bengals we know how hot uh, red hot the Bengals offense is we think Joe Burrow and company will remove the ball against the Giants so Daniel Jones is gonna have to be throwing he's gonna be throwing to Malik Neighbors and Wondell Robinson and Tyrone Tracy Theo Johnson, Listen. all the Giants, new, all the big stars on the Sunday The new night. Big Blue. Yeah. yeah. The new Big That's Blue. That's how they should market it. They should. Oh, I like blue. that. The yeah. new Big Blue. You're welcome, marketing team. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Listen, you don't want to face Daniel Jones. At, you don't want to face primetime DJ. Joe Burrow was very, very afraid of that I'm, matchup I'm sure. against primetime DJ. Is that the new DJ. marketing campaign for the Giants, or is it just like, at least we're not the Jets? Yeah, same and record. Just, uh, there we go. Yeah, same right. record. We'll see where this through. goes. <laughs> same record. That's exactly right. Yeah. Both New York teams are two and three. I'll tell you what, the Giants' loss to the Commanders looks a lot better these days. It actually uh, does. Loss to the Vikings as well. well. They got smashed by the Vikings. But, but again, that looks like a much better loss in yeah. week one than like, yeah. you know. Going to Seattle, that's a good win. Seattle's that, not that amazing, but they're win. solid. At that Seattle's good tough, though. You, yes. at, at Seattle's tough. Do you buy anything into the um, – uh, there's this thing about like teams that play the Lions. Mm. I'm curious if, if the market has caught up with this. Teams that play the Lions lose the next week. Like, this happened with the 49ers a couple of years ago as well. Just, they're they're so out. physical. They're just the, the, the Lions are so physical that they just sort of beat them up. And just like the team that plays the Lions ends up losing the next week. Seattle played the Lions the week before That's interesting. losing to the Giants. So I was just curious if you, if, if you bought into the that at all, if the in. market has bought into that thesis. I think it's so it's niche. I mean, with that stuff, I buy it in a nutshell. Like if you were playing, um, you know, the – 
like early 2010 Steelers or whatever and going up against that physical defense I would get that that there would be a bit more wear and tear mm. it's like playing the Memphis Grizzlies in the NBA the Gr sure. Brown Grizzlies you don't want to mm. play them and have to play another team on a back to back so maybe there's a small element of that I just don't think like the Lions like yeah they're good the defense has improved and everything the offensive line is very physical I'm not sure though that it's the you know 2008 Ravens or whatever for whatever it is worth so far this year teams that face the Lions are 0 and 4 the following week. That includes the Buccaneers losing at home to the Broncos, the Seahawks losing at home to the Giants. I'm just, okay. just putting Sometimes it out there. To monitor. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just asking questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking questions over here. I don't know. I'm just asking uh, the questions. Well, can I ask one more? Yeah, Bora, do you go think for it's it. a coincidence that since producer Pete was at the happy hour bar and uh, finally canceled the Daniel Jones experiment, that Daniel Jones might win the Giants enough games that they can't draft his replacement in yeah. the offseason. Is it a coincidence? It's an at all. I don't know. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, back in producer Pete, since his appearance, his debut on Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Giants are 2-0. Oh. Giants are 2-0. and oh. mm. Plus Giants 700 to make the playoffs. No, Giants, 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 oh Giants, here we go. Giants are 2-0. Wow, and oh. get laughed at. They Giants the are 2-0. the best defensive player in football. What, say that again? they got the best defensive player in football. Got a competent... Uh, quarterback got mm. the, the top 10 wide receiver in the sport I think they might be okay coach I think that yeah. was okay former coach of the year Brian Dayball much to my chagrin much yeah. to everyone's chagrin but let's the uh, Pat Sertan erasure at the beginning of that is noted by the way he's the best defensive player in football Dexter, Dexter Lawrence Martin. been a monster you can yeah, God, God going Dexter Lawrence one on one with it. He's very pro. good. He's uh, quite they're, good. They're 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 both very good. But also the Mets, the Mets are you know Mets are you know uh, one on one. They got a chance to win Game Three tonight. Right. Again, since backup producer Pete came on board, you know, Mets continue to roll in the playoffs. Yep. That's a good point. It's, just, it's, so, know, just, the it's a magic show if you can just get your way on air with us. You could change you're, the tides you, of many things. Yeah. Of whatever team you love. Joe Flacco, our next quarterback on the list, ninety two percent available. Jay Flacco mm. still got it. Well, do you see? I don't know if you noticed, but Jay was like bringing up Pete, Pete and everything. He was filibustering to kill time. So, oh, we, we have to cancel the last two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're running out of time, so we can't Let's get go to, to Joe ends. Flacco, former comeback player of the year, the current comeback player of the year, Joe Flacco. <sighs> God, he looked good against the Suns, <laughs> didn't he? Yeah. Still got a howitzer. Listen, if he and plays spry, bad, he looks spry, Jay. Yeah. If he, the thing with Flacco, if he plays bad defenses, he will carve them up. Yeah. He will put on his Super Bowl MVP pants and uh, <laughs> eviscerate them. Now. Let's see him go up against a good defense with pass rush, and let's see how he does, yeah. where he's made to look like a statue. And they're I'm on the still, road to Tennessee, which is a good defense. They I'm are. still with Flacco. Do you remember two years ago when he came in for the Jets, when he came to that game against the Bills? And it's like the guy just could not move. Yeah, it, was, it was an absolute mess. Yeah, it's like, this guy's an NFL quarterback. I don't know how yeah. we've gotten from that to this, and I'm very upset about it, that we had the interlude with the Browns last year, which cost me dearly. But look, if he is the quarterback, then... I, he's just going to drop back and throw 40 times. Like, that's just how this works and how it operates. And now in the Stikin offense, he has weapons. Now, the Titans have a much better defense than the Jags do. Yes. And I think Anthony Richardson is probably going to start anyway. But if it is Flacco, then I think he is startable. Seven straight games dating back to last season with multiple touchdown passes, averaging over 20 fantasy points per game in that stretch. Just saying. He's... Yeah, he just seems to put up 350 yards every time he's out there. It's insane. Yeah. Our last one here, Russell Wilson. Preemptively, I'm just... Look... I said this yesterday as well. I don't know how they go back to Justin Fields. That was a winnable game on Sunday night, and they, one of the big reasons they lost is that Justin Fields could not make basic throws on third down. You know, I get it that he's got the, uh, the you know, some magic ability, but he also can't do some of the basic stuff. I think Russell Wilson is the I'm, – I'm just planting the flag here. I think Russell Wilson is the starting quarterback for the Steelers on Sunday. Uh, they, they, need, they need to make that move. They're at Las Vegas. That's a game they can win. And so, again, Wilson isn't great, but if you're in a league like the League of Assholes where you're desperate, like, you know, I think he'd be a, you know, mid to low tier QB2 oh, he's on the road at Las Vegas. He's rostered in League of Assholes. I'm sure he is. Of course he is. But he's out <laughs> there in a lot of other of He's out there in a lot of other leagues. And yes. I do think if you're in a deeper league and you're looking for streamers, you're down this far. I think Russell Wilson starts this week, and when he does get the start, I think he'll be okay fantasy-wise on the road at Las Vegas. If you need a tight end, just check if Tucker Craft is out there in your league. He's 38% available, but most likely not. And if that's the case, K. Dotton, we've talked about him for weeks now, 63% available. Tyler Conklin's got the bills. He's 70% available. It's uh, it's tough out there right now at tight end. There's nothing else it to really say. It really is. But you know, Kate out in 20% target share of his last three games, and Saints have allowed the third most yards to tight ends. We saw Travis Kelsey. Uh, t uh, eat them up last night. We'll talk about that game coming up. And then Tyler Conklin versus Buffalo. 
still a member of the New York Jets. Not everyone that was a member of the New York Jets in London is can say that, but Tyler Conklin survived. still is. He survived uh, the blade of Rodgers there. He's also got an end zone target in two of the past three games, three straight games with at least a 17% target share. Seems like Rodgers actually likes Conklin. And so, you know, and, and <laughs> so that's a good way to present something. He gets to stay something. on the payroll. He gets to stay. He gets to stay on the play. He gets the to keep his chunk. game. He gets to keep his gig. So, anyway. There you go. It's you got, ugly out there. If you got a stream of defense, how about the Eagles against the Browns? Because Deshaun Watson is the worst starting quarterback in football and continues to start. The Texans have the Patriots. I don't think a lot more needs to be said about that. And then the Chargers have the Broncos. As much as things are trending the right way for the Broncos, the Bo Nix led offense is still what we like to call a training wheels offense. Jim Harbaugh's had two game, two uh, two weeks to prepare for a division rival, a division game against a rookie quarterback. I like his chances. If you want to make an ad from someone we mentioned today, you probably have to drop someone. Before we get to Rasheed Rice, David Njoku, Cole Komet, Jawan Jennings, Samir White, droppable options. Yeah. Rasheed Rice, I just they keep dangling the carrot in front of us that there's hope, but I don't I don't know, Matthew. Well, we're we're supposed to get more information today. They were gonna they were gonna find out the tests. They they're doing more testing today. I suspect that by the time you're ready to make your waiver claims this afternoon or tonight. We will know specifically that Rasheed Rice is highly unlikely to play again this year. Yep. Dominate this NFL season with a Fantasy Life Plus subscription. Yeah. Get weekly rankings, start sit advice, DFS analysis, and betting tools. And Use waiver tools. We have a waiver oh. hub that gives you advice on how much to bid on certain players, how to how to uh, analyze that as well. It's a very good tool. All these are great tools as well. And this want, will help you win. And if you want those tools with 20% off, use season 20. Go to fantasylife.com slash rotoworld to learn more. When we're back, our Monday Night Football recap, the return of Juju and Kareem Hunt. What year is this, 2021? We'll be right back. Josh Allen last week get, you know, got, got under eight fantasy points, right? And I lost by .14 to this asshole. And Try then uh, to, to, you know, I got Read slapped like a great. I got slapped like a great by Jay Croucher. Yeah, a thousand percent because Josh Allen had a bad game last week. And now I'm probably going to lose to Lawrence Jackson Jackson uh, because Josh Allen has another bad game. Slapped like a grape. Tough one. In the League of Assholes, yeah. mm. that is Lawrence Go that beats it. Matthew. Matthew now, while scoring just fine this season, is two and three. Yeah, 140. 100, like, and I, I've lost Rasheed Rice. It's been a, but, but you know, I've some yeah, tough yeah, injuries. Injuries happen in fantasy. It's yes, tough. Yes, no, I, I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> you look at that, though. Should we look? Who's, who's on top? Uh, yeah, that, slap them like a grape is in the, first the place. Grape slappers, most points for as well. That should be yeah. five and zero. Oh. That's the real travesty. Yeah. By the way, look at who's second in total points. Mm, backup producer. No. Date. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, sorry. He's second no. on the table. Look at look at under points for PF. Yeah, that's fine. At PF. Yep. Yeah. Who's got the second highest total Is in the, the league? The it's team that's under five hundred with yeah. the same record as the New York Giants. Yeah. Two and three. I'm at, I'm at two and three, but with mm. seven hundred thirty-five points, I'm second in total points in this league, it's despite funny. losing Rasheed Rice, and yet, but somehow I'm in six because. Fantasy is unfair. You're more like two and two and a half, just losing to the grape slapping juggernaut. It's really only half a loss, it's kind of implied. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I could keep a couple on my bench. Match, I, I wish we'd, we'd stayed on the matchup longer. Like again, so. Jaleel Lord, McLaughlin. Jaleel McLaughlin, <laughs> Ken so Coleman, good. like my, my Josh Allen not doing anything. Like he got great performances from scrubs, or not even scrubs, people that had. Kyle Pitts hasn't done anything this year. Finally usable yeah. in against me, right? In week five. Yeah, look here. Look at look at look at uh, look at all those well, players. Look he at, did start Deshaun Watson. So I didn't. Yeah, I mean, start. right. He, 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 I mean, look at it. Look at you know some of the guys. He, right. I mean, DeAndre Swift was uh, unusable for three weeks. Right. Zay Flowers been bad the last two. McLaughlin, P Pitts. Um, you know, obviously the big game from uh, Rashid. He starts Deshaun Watson. Gets a monster game from Lamar. I mean, Lamar's been good, but like you gets know, the one random play from Keon Coleman. Yeah. It, Thank you. Exactly. Exactly right. You know, and things just didn't couch. go your way on this right. one. Things really haven't gone your way this season. No, the... they haven't been. I mean, again, like, <laughs> a lot know. of time left. Yeah. What are you going to do? It's week five. What are you going to do? Plenty of time. Plenty of time. 
I, I just get to, I gotta make some trades. I might just start making trades because yeah. well, I've made one trade and it's 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 turned us around. Yeah. It's like they firing Robert Sala and putting yeah. Jeff Overk in place. We yeah. have Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield now. <laughs> yeah. We'll see I where it goes. Pushed Otter and given you Donald instead. I know, but I, I would never do that. Donald. I've lived yeah. the Sam Donald experience. Now I'm in trouble. I might need a quarterback. I have Fields and Donald. I'll I have trade jo- you Russell Wilson. I have Joe Burrow, who Cup I think is going to be a top three quarterback. Joe Burrow is going to be just fine. But uh, yeah, right. Fields and Donald. You're okay. Yeah, You're yeah. okay. Yeah, the Grape Slappers will be just fine. Yeah, that's fine. Now we're a powerhouse. Yeah, all right, let's get in and make a trade for Joe Joe Mixon, Cooper Cup, and Christian McCaffrey all on my bench at the moment. So wait for the playoffs. That is a juggernaut. That is a juggernaut. Yeah. I, I obviously I'm rooting for live at noon the cock, but I think the second team that I'm rooting for in this so league is him? any anyone yeah. but mm. anyone so but the grape so slappers. Plays the grape slappers. Yeah, exactly. That's my favorite, second favorite team in the league. Let's Can get into Monday Night week? Football. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's the right Someone answer. who's losing. It's the right answer. The Chiefs beat the Saints 26 to 13 in a very odd looking group of pass catchers at this stage. Besides Travis Kelsey, who has a really nice night, but Juju Smith Schuster, eight targets, seven catches. 130 yards. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. ridiculous. For a converted frankly. tight end, that's what he, he's got to be, right? <laughs> he looked like he's yeah. the Rasheed Rice role now. I mean, I guess. Honestly, that's true, though. I mean, like a lot of his routes were the Rasheed, were the were the were the were the, were the inside stuff. The the a lot of the Rasheed Rice stuff went to Juju Smith Schuster, and he was wide open. They didn't account for him. 23 and a half percent target share, which was second on the team. 82 of his 130 yards came after the catch. Again, they're getting some of the, that easy stuff that they were doing with Rasheed field. Rice. You know, where it was just all that underneath stuff was 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 open for Rice and he would get the yards after the catch and he's doing that now. He did only play 66, per, he only had a 66% route participation. And this is somebody that has had zero fantasy points in three of the previous four games. It was his most fantasy points since week 14 of 2022. Having said that, you feel like, um, you know, that they're looking for answers here. The expectation here is that Rasheed Rice isn't coming back. And so, you know, they, they brought him back once the, you know, he's just getting up to speed kind of thing. Now they're going to have a bye week. He's, you know, he doesn't look like Juju of old, but I don't know that he needs to be in this offense. I, I think this is sort of legit. Yeah. I, look, I, I mean, you know, like. I, so not many other options. There's not that Mahomes exactly. clearly likes it. Uh, yeah. He's the number one wide receiver for Patrick Mahomes. I think there's a good chance that he just through volume alone, like we mentioned before, that he surpasses Xavier Worthy, who is yeah, very sure. big play dependent. Um, we'll talk about the other guys on the Chiefs, but to me, the, the biggest kind of takeaway out of this is that in terms of an action, I would try and trade for Patrick Mahomes because last night, Patrick Mahomes last night, I think, had the greatest game of all time where someone threw for zero touchdowns and one interception. Mahomes was masterful. He should have, on merit, had 400-plus yards and two touchdowns because Paulson and Depot committed crimes down the right sideline twice where he committed P.I. on Xavier Worthy twice. One of them got called, the other didn't. One of those should have been a bomb touchdown. Mahomes had a touchdown callback um, by a holding penalty. Um, the pick in the end zone to Juju was extremely fluky like it's a huge sign it's a great sign that Mahomes was able to show that production just didn't show up in the stat sheet and the yeah. interception had some bad luck to it right yeah. which was a great play by Colin Saunders who catches the ball that goes off of Juju yeah. let's and go big man the big man rumbles at 324 pounds Colin Saunders reached a top speed of 15.79 miles per hour on his 36 yard interception the yeah. third fastest speed by a ball carrier who weighs over 320 pounds since 2016. Linval Joseph and George Fant were the two fastest. And for that, Colin Saunders well, drinks free today here at the Happy Hour uh, Bar. As well, Rumble Big that Man was an, That was an unbelievable play by uh, by the big fella there getting to a high speed. Like, those were Joe Flacco numbers in terms of the well, speed that he got to. Well, apparently four miles per hour was less than Joe Flacco, which I would debate. We're, we're still <laughs> – uh, but I will say, just in terms of broadcasting, what an unbelievable moment where on the broadcast, on the main broadcast, they're talking about the fact that his brother is a backup dancer for Taylor Swift. It's super random. Like, right. who knew that? It's a very small world. Right? You know, and they had a, they had a shot of when he, meaning uh, Saunders' brother's brother, was on the stage with Travis Kelsey, who also did a couple of stints as a backup tight end for, Travis, uh, for Taylor Swift on her tour. And then he makes this unbelievable play. So it was just kind of this weird confluence That's of... Uh, Joe uh, Buck was in his bag last night. Oh, <laughs> it was yes. top 10 out of 10. Deep, deep in his bag. <laughs> Great to see Travis Kelsey come back. Season high in fantasy points. Season high catches. Red zone targets. Catch rate. Looks back. You know, yeah. it was a nice matchup here as well. And it, it's clear that uh, Kareem Hunt, as long as, as long as Pacheco is out and he's not coming back, Kareem Hunt's going to be the guy. He led all running backs in rushes in week five. 80% of the team's red zone rushes. 
Doesn't look explosive, but he's getting the job That's in the a high-octane high, uh, high octane offense. On the Saints side, Jay, eh, not a lot of great things. <laughs> not a lot of great things. I think the big takeaway is that Rashid Shahid needs to be started every single week. Uh, he was the guy in the offense um, over Chris Olave. Uh, he catches the bomb touchdown, which you might think is unsustainable. Well, it seems pretty sustainable for Rashid Shahid because he's got the most bomb touchdowns the past couple of years, along with Devontae Adams. I don't think there's other huge takeaways. Just need to monitor the health uh, of Derek Carr, which doesn't look incredible at this point. I'm not super excited about Mason Tipton. No, nor should you be, or, or Jake Hayner, if he were to take over for uh, Derek Carr. Although Jake Hayner will be Ross, someone will pick him up in the League of Assholes. I'd rather they start Spencer Rattler, but yeah. But I agree. I would think Hayner's experience there would give him the edge. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on all that. We'll keep an eye on all that as well. But I just have a question for you guys right here. Rashid Shahid now has 15 fantasy points in four of game four four of five games this season. Chris Olave, this is his second game this year with under four fantasy points. If I'm telling you you can only start one Saints wide receiver next week, who is it? I'm starting Shahid. I'd still start Olave, but I think it's a coin flip. Just, if, I mean, I think it's a question here. 12.5% target share for Olave as well. I think you're probably right. You have to stick with him, but it's concerning. It's a concerning trend. One more break. Back to the futures right after this. DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one place to bet touchdowns, and new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the app and use promo code Barry when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the, the crown, crown is yours. As we always do on Tuesdays, back to the futures. Our little crystal ball segment of the week, Jay. What are, we, what are we digging deep for here? Uh, digging deep to have the Dallas Cowboys miss the playoffs. It's oh, minus 115 baby. on DraftKings. It's minus 150 by my numbers, so there's a bit of an edge there. Here's their upcoming schedule. Detroit at San Francisco, at Atlanta, Philadelphia, Houston at Washington. That's brutal. I think the Cowboys miss. Matthew? I'm going to go plus money here. 49ers to miss the playoffs at plus 135. Look, one of the things last year they did is they stayed really healthy. And we've already seen the injury bug continue to creep up. They're own, they're two and three. They're losing the teams they shouldn't uh, they shouldn't lose to as well. The division isn't that tough, but still, like I just think the injury bug and you know, look, we've already seen it. Yeah, they're two and three. Yeah, I'm gonna at plus money. Give me the Niners to miss the playoffs. Why not? I'm gonna take them over nine and a half wins. <laughs> okay, at minus one twenty five because you hinted at it. I think this division stinks. And fair. I think the Niners are in trouble. I agree with you. The injuries are scary. They're slow starters, but I think they can coach their way out of this. I just don't believe in the Rams, Seattle, and the Cardinals yep. to be better than them right now. Maybe. Over nine and a half wins for the Niners. Okay. I don't know. Have to I, I kind of like, like Seattle, but we'll see how Maybe. it all plays out. It's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. For Jay and Connor, I'm Matthew Barry. We'll see you here tomorrow. Good luck on waivers tonight. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own Fantasy Football Happy Hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.